I'm Kimberly Kane, and this is the Naked Vibe Show. I'm here today with two amazing people. Maylee Thomas Where Fuller. Are they? <laughs> Where? Where? I'm, I'm here to see them too. Where are they? Okay, so I can already see how this conversation is going to fly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was looking around. Right. I mean, I know I'm one of them. I was uh, who's that's the other? George, <laughs> and that's Maylee. <laughs> And we are at their place of business, which is called the Guitar Sanctuary in McKinney, Texas. And so, you guys, thank you so much for doing this with me and hanging out and, and, and playing. Yeah. So tell me about the Guitar Sanctuary and what it means to you, what it means to the community. You know, Guitar Sanctuary is a, uh, it's a concept I had years and years ago. I mean, I have... Uh, good friend Andy Timmons and we talked all the time about man how great would it be to open a guitar store we're always on the hunt for all this different gear we're buying guitars on eBay we're buying pedals on eBay and I had this crazy notion that if I open a store I'd save money yeah. I'd buy it at wholesale and, and I could stop this uh, and, uh, insanity yeah insanity so it started as a joke and then one day um, just uh, I started thinking about it and um, you know all the big chains uh, came in to the music business about 20 years ago and took the small guys out of business. So yeah. independent stores that, you know, where I grew up with independent stores yes. where people knew your name and, and it was a community, it was a musical community and uh, big box retail came in and changed all that. And for, for me, changed it for the worst. Sure. So um, I wanted to open a store that uh, got back to that, uh, the independent where, um, you know, where we have a rapport and a relationship and, and uh, with the customer and, not just a uh, Walmart style, you know, um, uh, purchase uh, uh, experience. Yeah, absolutely. And you have a lot of custom guitars here, right? We do. We have um, boutique guitar manufacturers uh, primarily is what we feature. We also carry some of the, the larger name brands, Fender and Gibson and Paul Reed Smith. But uh, we really focus on boutique stuff, really nice, you know, stuff where people... The, my criteria is you gotta, you got to build a great instrument. you got to be passionate about building that great instrument and passionate about building the amplifier, Mesa Boogie, for example. Um, and if you, if you qualify in those things, then we want to carry you. Yeah, and what's so cool about this place, first of all, I just, I love the way it looks. It just, it just is so juicy. <laughs> it makes me just want to get in here, and, and it makes me want to play guitar, which, though I have a tailor, that just has not infiltrated it it just hasn't happened so I'm okay with it I'm okay to let other great guitar players do that work but this is also a great event space and that's where we are right now we'll see some guitars in a minute but we're in their event space and I've been to some events here saw one of the most incredible shows I've ever seen with Terry Bozio because I'm a, a drum lover and that was yeah. It was pretty spectacular. I was at that show as well, and to see him, that massive kit that he has, mm -hmm. um, to see him make that kit sound like an orchestra, I mean, I, I guess that's when I really understood the concept of tuning a drum kit. Oh, yeah. And uh, he, he has his... Yeah, it was a very musical it. experience, not just rhythmically, which is normally what you'd hear in a drummer, yeah. of course, is a rhythmic music experience, but this was a melodic uh, it was yeah, really incredible. So, yeah. so you you know it, you saw it. And Absolutely, was... and and the, that's the thing I think people don't understand about drums a lot is yeah. that you know it's such a primal experience, and he's such a master that he knows how to uh, take us through the full frequency range, you know, and just really make that like you said, it's a melodic experience. It's probably like a full body experience. Yeah. So. Well, what I loved most about um, the concept that George came up with was he said, if we ever build a store, I want to have a venue attached to it so that we can actually have, um, you know, have some of these players have an experience to come and, and play to people and let them see, you know, what they do. And it can't be too big because we want people to be able to play that maybe somebody doesn't really know about. Right. Of course, it's actually turned into something pretty phenomenal because we've had some fabulous players here. Yeah. And they love coming back because... I know my generation, we like that intimate feel. Yes. We like to come to a venue where, frankly, we'll pay a little bit more yes. to have less people right. and have a more uh, intimate experience with that artist. And I've been 
so blessed, and I know George feels the same way well, to have these people. Yeah, I think we have a little bit different reason. We built it small because the lot wasn't any bigger. <laughs> I would have, so Maybe. contrary to what you just heard, I would you have built have it five arena. times the size if I could have, and I would have partitioned it off. But um, but that's okay. Um, but the other, the, the real reason why it's we... It's for Maylee. It's, yeah, for Maylee. But the... A primary reason we built the venue is we also have a performance academy. We teach students, and I wanted a place where students could perform, and we could invite family and friends and give them the experience that most people never have. So, mm -hmm. so kids and adults alike take lessons, and some for years and years and years in their in their life during their lifetime, and they'll never, you know, to put a band together and book that band and get the equipment and play out. Um, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's low, 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 low percentage of people that, that pick up a guitar that will ever play um, publicly for an audience. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they miss out on that experience. And of course, if you have that experience, it does two things. It motivates you um, and it's, it rewards you for the work that you've been doing. So to be able to have a, a venue where we can have those students perform and, and have that experience and get hooked in music. Um, which is a beautiful thing, right? If you're, oh, yeah. you know, you, there's not many better things to be hooked on um, than music. Absolutely. Though, of course, the name of your show brings to mind another one that's good to be hooked on. But, <laughs> but music is a uh, is a beautiful thing. So. See, I knew the nakedness would work its way in it here. It work, yeah. It, it's going to weave through this whole thing. Just watch. <laughs> so, well, and that could be a beautiful thing, specifically as we were younger. Thing. But you know, it's it's flowing art. Or not, right? It's flowing art, and sometimes flows right. too much, but. But you know that you're right, that experience that motivates you and gets in your blood. I started performing when I was a kid and that's something that is such a passion and if I'm away from it for too long, it just calls to you. It's a sharing experience. That's one of the things that I love about this smaller venue is it's a listening room and people listen to the artists and artists so crave that, right? Oh, because I'm you telling. perform it's, here. It's, it's, you know, without a doubt, and you know, of course it's our space, so it's, you know, a little bit self-serving, but this is my favorite room to play in. Oh, yeah. Um, it's also the closest to our house. It's well, true. Absolutely. It's we, it's we, we walk up here. So. <laughs> but um, I, but it, it is true, Kimberly, and as you know, um, there's nothing more satisfying than looking out at an audience and seeing them looking back. Yeah, being you know, with and you. And then actually connecting with them and feeling them, you know, feel the music with you. So yeah. it's an experience that I love. And I also love being in the audience and feeling that way mm -hmm. with the artists when they're up here. But um, I'm like you. If I'm not playing and performing, it calls me. And, and you know, George will tell you it's most of the time that we go to a concert, I'm looking at what's going on on stage between the artists. Yes. And I'm sitting there thinking, I want to get up there. <laughs> yeah, well, and... You know how many clubs we've been thrown out as a result of <laughs> jumping <laughs> on stage? Even the stage, jumped on stage, yeah, yeah exactly. Storming no, honey, it's stage. a Philharmonic Orchestra. They don't have a vocalist right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, this is something that you'll see, though, Maylee, you... Your vocal range and your abilities, um, yeah, I can see you in a Philharmonic Orchestra <laughs> setting. I can too. Absolutely. I mean, well, really. Well, the police it's... did. <laughs> the <laughs> police <laughs> saw her as well right before they dragged her out. <laughs> so not true. Yeah. So, okay, I want, uh, I want everybody to get a taste of your music. <clears throat> so, will you do a song for us? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. What yeah. do you want to do? We'll do a... Uh, a song that George came up with the idea. It's called "I Fell for You," or "I Keep Falling." Actually, as we get older, it's uh, "I Fell." But, you know. <laughs> and then, then I'm going to tell him, "I fell for you, honey." <laughs> oh, Soon good. we'll add that I can, and I can't get up. And, and the song will come with a little <laughs> necklace It'll thing that you do. Yeah. So we, we like to. We'll we put like, it in. We'll, we'll do vinyl, and we'll actually insert it inside. Well, we, right? we write. We write for the long haul. You know, so, we write a song that's relevant today, but when we're 90, it works too. Absolutely, because well, the thing is. We're that generation of rock and roll, right? That's yeah. where it's not going to stop for us. No. That's not going to go away just because we get older. No. You know? No, so, I'm, I'm in this for the long haul till they, yeah. till they throw dirt in my face. We've already, we already started decorating a rock and roll walker. So when you <laughs> it, it's going to come with, you know, some real cool stuff. Because it will be cool. It some tie-dye cool. you can bet, right? <laughs> It will be gone. Okay, so we're rascals. You exactly. can ride a rascal right up to the microphone. I've been I've been thinking about all the people who are going to be in nursing homes and what those tattoos are going to start looking like we've, by the nineties and hundreds, right? We literally have played nursing homes. <laughs> we, we did, but it we, was when you were running we, for office. When we played that one nursing home, to walk in and literally see on the billboard, uh, lunch meatloaf. <laughs> 
entertainment, Maylee Thomas Band. <laughs> you know, when you are when you are underneath when you're opening for meatloaf, or actually we closed for meatloaf. <laughs> for the you know, actual well, food meatloaf. Well, we you know we I always thought that it would be for meatloaf, but <laughs> this was his. Like, I took a picture of it. You know, I always thought we'd open for meatloaf, but it turns out they it opened for us. Oh my gosh. Okay, that said, let's listen to a song, please. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do a song called I Keep Falling. It was written about uh, just one day I was actually sitting around and thinking about how um, in this relationship, in this marriage, in 26 years or 100 years, however long it's been, <laughs> long time, um, how does it, uh, how do we still keep it interesting, right? How do we, why, why is it so interesting? And I realized that I um, fell in love with this woman, but the truth is I just keep falling in love with her. So came up with this little song. I Keep Falling by George and May Lee, and they perform as the May Lee Thomas Band, but we were just in the guitar room here at the Guitar Sanctuary, which is amazing. And you got to see all those guitars that George was talking about yeah. surrounding us. So well, here's that's just the acoustic room. We have all those electrics and yeah, you know what? Okay, so we'll have to get some photos, or I'll get a little bit of video footage so I can show you guys uh, the electric stuff. Because uh, we'll do a, we'll do a little quickie tour somewhere on Perfect. here so you can see it. Yeah, great. yeah. Um, so that brings me to something really interesting. This is a rock and roll dude here, okay? And this is obviously just a, a I'm not going to say rock and roll diva because it's blues, it's everything, mainly is the whole package, okay? So recently, George just won the mayoral race in McKinney, Texas. So we've got a rock Did and I roll win? mayor. <laughs> I won. <laughs> Somebody call my mom. That'd be hard to do. Hard to do. <laughs> So you guys, what I think is so great about this is that, um, you know, there's so much divisiveness in our country and in our world. Oh, sad. And it, it's, it's just, um, it, it is the wrong direction. 
And what I love is that you guys are going for this in a nonpartisan way, in a way that brings people together. And the Naked Vibe show is, is about love. And it's about bringing people together and showing um, ways of leadership that bring more love and more consciousness into the world. And that's what you're doing. So tell me how it feels to be the rock and roll mega. You know, it, for me, it may feel different than some of the people out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Especially those who worked against me. Um, you know, it's it's great. Being mayor, I'm asked often, you know, what's it like being mayor? My first, uh, the first thing I say is it's rewarding. Um, when I get asked, why did you run? I say stupidity. <laughs> but um, now, you know, we, it, it was, uh, it was a big deal to take that on and a big decision to take it on. But just as you said, you know, it's, um, it's supposed to be a nonpartisan position. Everyone tries to make, I say everyone, there's a, there's a lot of people that try to make it a partisan position and they want to make it about, um, divisive issues, and I, I, from the day I started running to today, um, and through my, uh, my mayoral tenure, I will not allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. So um, I ran because I wanted to represent a city that I love that's been great to me, I mean really great to me, great to my family, great to my business, and, uh, and I want to represent and help further that city along and help advance us in the best way possible, and I felt that I had a skill set that, um, that could, could do that, and that uh, and so I decided to, to run. I was mm -hmm. also sick and tired of, um, of divisive politics. Yeah. Certainly the mayor before me, Brian, was not that either. He, Brian, Brian was a, a great mayor. But I mean on a national scale, we came through the sure. last presidential election. And I can't think of a more horrifying, saddening uh, um, uh, display of human behavior than we saw mm -hmm. so much of during that mm -hmm. election. Um, and that may in itself be a divisive statement, but, but you know, it really is. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible where we've come as a society um, when we have to focus on all that divides us versus all that, that brings us together. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, truly, um, you know, we've said that we want to try to find the things that we all have in common. And the one thing that we have in common, I'm hoping, you know, is that we all want to spread love to one another and um, have everybody get a fair chance in life. And so I knew George was the right person because that's what, how I fell in love with him from the very beginning is, um, you know, he's just a very open individual that listens and He's very good at listening to ha understanding both sides of a situation and you know, helping people come to um, somehow come to an agreement. And it might not be you agreeing with their position, but coming to a place where you understand that, you know what, we're not going to get anything done if we don't you know, try to find some common ground. And yeah. um, that's the one thing that he's been able to do that I admire. Well, and, and I'd like to take that last uh, 40 seconds she said and take the last 12 seconds take that out but the part about how good I am and in disagreement and all that and then have that and I want to be able to play that when she and I you know and I'll say hey you know it's secret file yeah, send me a secret file that I can just I want it on my phone and the moment that uh, you know that I'm going to play it for you it's said okay. by the way so therefore we will go by my um, I love it now it's uh yeah it really is that it's it's uh we have a great city right and and what better way to um, be engaged in that city than to be involved in uh, in its leadership? So. Yeah, it is a cool city, and you know, I, I one of the things that I do is I'm certified as a high performance coach, and I've worked with a lot of men who talk about how they can't get back to their creativity. They used to play drums, or they used to play guitar, they yeah. used to be in a band, or do X Y Z, be involved in sports. And now they're, they're just mired in a job that they hate or in a marriage that feels dead. And one of the things that I always tell people is start playing because music is about playing. You don't work music, although we work hard at it. You play music. And I really think that it, it rounds your life out and it creates a new level of leadership when you bring those skills to the table because as musicians, what we know is that if we're not listening on stage, it's a train wreck. So we develop a, a different level of listening as musicians. What do, you, what do you think that that has brought to the table for you as a leader? You know, first I have to say I've never heard anyone express it that way and that's so insightful. 
So thank you. Yeah, I mean, really, truly, about as far as on stage and, and the and the listening that is incumbent upon a musician mm -hmm. in an ensemble situation. I mean, we have to work together. We're we're a uh, we're an ensemble, and if one of us uh, isn't listening, I think everyone in music has played with a person that fell in that category. Um, yes. I can think of one in particular that we played with for quite some time. <laughs> we all have. Yeah. Um, but uh, so yeah, that that's actually um, that's quite an observation, and I think that certainly. Um, experiences in business that I've had, you combine those two worlds together and I think that it, it does, um, it served me well. It served me uh, certainly from a creative standpoint, but but a listening and a... And a and, uh, Being a part of something. Well, yeah, and I come from in, in the band um, and in uh, in building businesses, you know, that's a, both of those are worlds that you bring people together and create something very harmonious, something, mm -hmm. uh, if you're gonna be successful, it's gotta be good. So I think that served me well. And you know, Bruce Springsteen, I just recently heard him talking and he said, um, someone said, so you've been working at this for a long time. He says, no, no. Why do you think they call it playing music? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I haven't had a job since I picked up the guitar. Yeah. Um, but the reality is, as, as you pointed out, it, it is, uh, it is you know, we are playing music, but we're having to work together. Yes. And it doesn't come, if, if we just, we only are concerned about what we're doing on stage and everyone does their own thing. And you have six, five, six people <laughs> playing their own thing. Well, especially in our band, because yeah. <laughs> I don't do anything the same right. twice. <laughs> right. You know, and, uh, and what's been really cool about that is George and I have literally been playing music together for 26 years, right? Longer than that, but go ahead. But, um, <laughs> we, uh, Since 1927. Oh, stop it. <laughs> but they we, look great. Um, we oftentimes, you know, we'll just go off on something and it's amazing how we're connected because we, you know, we've played enough together and we kind of know where each other's going, but um, it's important that you learn to do that in life and you get to where you listen, you know, as a mother of four kids that are completely different <laughs> from each other, I can tell you that um, I have had a lot of train wrecks because I wasn't listening mm -hmm. to each one of them and trying to well, bring to it be, all together. To be fair, two of them we didn't want to listen to. <laughs> and you know, you know which two you are. Okay? <laughs> two of you are really, really good. You know which ones. I'm not going to tell you. Secretly, I'll tell you each of two. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, that's, too, that's funny too. You're talking about playing together for as long as you guys have that there's an intuitiveness that happens there so that you're not just listening with your ears, you're listening as a full body experience and you just have a knowing about where the other person is going to yeah. go. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's literally, we're, we'll be on stage and, um, and I might play something differently. Uh, Maylee might sing something differently and we'll both hear it. We'll both hear like, wow, that, that could, uh, if, we, if we built on that, and made this right hand turn right here, that would be really cool. And we will both know that that's what we're going to do. I mean, literally, without, we don't, we don't have time to stop the band and, and consult and make sure. some notes. We will just, I mean, I'll play it. I know she heard it or mm -hmm. she'll sing it. She knows I heard it. And um, whether we're breaking it down and, and changing a feel or whatever it is, it's, um, it's something that we've really gotten to where we, we, we just feel the direction that's, that we're going to go in. And, and isn't uh, it isn't it fun? It's a spiritual sense, kind of. I mean, absolutely. Because really um, I mean, I, I get that. I've been singing with my sister since we were kids, mm -hmm. and so it's funny. I can I can just feel her from the side of me, and I just I'm like, okay, this is what's about to happen, or will I'll see something happening in the audience, you know? And I think, do not look at me, do not look at me, and she's thinking the same thing because we may bust out laughing. You know? right, so you right. can just you know, we won't even go shit. there. <laughs> We've had a lot of that. Well, and that's I'm sure. You know that to, to take a full circle. Um, <laughs> when Bailey and I first started playing together, before we were going out, uh, there was a feeling that happened on stage that was different than the feeling that we're talking about, and that's how we got ended up getting together. <laughs> you, she, she, you know. <laughs> She touched me in a way that made me realize that yeah, there's there's something more. It was electricity. It's electricity, and I'll leave it at that because it's a family show. But um, so feeling sort of you know happens in a lot of different ways when you're married. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, just talking about your leadership, and we're going to talk about that um, 
your marriage a little bit later. Um, I want to play one of your songs here, and you had mentioned something to me earlier about something that just really fits with yeah. Texas. Yeah, so one of, the, one of the songs we, uh, we wrote that's on this record, and by the way, the cover art for this record was done by our daughter when she was 14, right? Mm -hmm. Probably 14, 15, 14, 15, mm -hmm. Layla Grace, uh, who's a musician in her own right and very, very talented. Um, but there's a song we wrote called Texas Home, and it's certainly you know about Texas, but specifically in the song we talk about McKinney and oh, cool. about this town and and uh, the city and what it uh, what it means to us, what it what it means living here and and the spirit that it it kind of um, you know it just uh, it, it puts you in and it, it it's uh, when you live in Texas you know I mean Texas oh, yeah. is a whole different it's a whole different animal isn't it it is it's a whole different it animal. is we get a bad rap but the reality is. Um, I, I love this, you know, I love this state, and I was actually born here, and I've lived a lot of different places since then, but we came back here, and we've made it our home, and I think it's pretty amazing that actually, you know, George is the mayor of a city here. I would have never, if you'd have told me 26 <laughs> years ago that he'd be the mayor, I'd look at you and laugh, you know. Uh, no, frank, frankly, when I told her a year ago, I was going to Yeah, honestly. Like, I mean, let's laugh. just, I mean, this let's is just be real, but no. <laughs> yeah, um, but I, I mean, just... I, I, of course, always knew that he had the ability to do it, and, um, you know, George is just one of those well-rounded individuals that's just creative. And I lost weight. And <laughs> yeah. I lost weight. I lost 50 pounds he during did. the election. I'm not as rounded as I was. Rounding down. Yeah. Well, I know. Do you remember? Just the other day, I said to her, "Do you remember the night we went to dinner and you told me you were going to run?" And I just, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just a positive thinking. I just went, "You're going to win." It was just a knowing. No, it was an amazing. It's really it was cool. an amazing it journey. You know, it really was, and um, I was so proud of the way that we played it and. We didn't get dirty, um, you know, even yeah. though some stuff got thrown in our direction that we could have certainly played back dirty, but we didn't do that. We kept the, you know, we took the high road and, um, and it, of course, paid off as it always does because that's just the way it should be, mm -hmm. you know. But um, I learned a lot about ourselves that I didn't know about um, during oh, that election. A lot. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I can so, only imagine. That was a, but you that know was what? I've got to plug the fact that, because we talked earlier about nonpartisanness, and in the race, we had, we had far left to, to far right get behind us. We had Democrats and Republicans um, that, that really bought into this idea that this is a position that's that politics need to be checked at the door. This is yeah. this is about the well-being of a city, the welfare of a city, the um, how we advance the community, how we build the community the best we can. So people bought into that, and uh, which is good because that was my sincere desire. And, um, and I we wish had, the country would buy into yeah, that. I mean, yeah, we, we we held an event, uh, asked people to volunteer to walk for us, help us walk blocks, and we had 65 people show up on a Saturday morning, give up their day. To walk neighborhoods, so um, you know That's it was wonderful. it was really really encouraging to see to see that happen, mm -hmm. and uh, and for us that's uh, we know that's why we won. We had yeah. we had a, a wide um, spread of people that uh, that got behind us. Well, you you mentioned to me the other day, Maylie, you were talking about that bringing people together mm -hmm. in this um, this attitude and environment of love is really your mission and I think when people are on their mission and they're on purpose that those things naturally come together that you don't have to try I mean you work hard at it but that's sort of your anchor you just keep coming back well, we, to your uh, as you know we we just celebrated 25 years of our nonprofit called Love Life Foundation I'm glad you brought that up yes and, um, and the mission of it is to help, you know, at-risk women and children love life. And so it's been a part of our, you know, it's been our motto since we've been together. And we saw and we still see all the time what love can do. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so really the bottom line is we just want everybody to understand that um, that love really does conquer It does a lot. And, and Eric Clapton was saying that decades ago. He was. You know, see what love can do. He That's was, right. He was telling. We just didn't know then, but That's now right. we, yeah. we're just no, we've starting always known to. It. And um, you know, I've just been so blessed and so I, I just don't even know how to. Well, let's be honest. It's Christmas for you every day. It is totally. You're I so mean, yeah, I'm married, I'm married to Santa Claus. Married to Santa Claus. Actually, he looked like Santa Claus for years. 
You know, I, I, it used to be it used to be that Maylee would have me get up every morning ahead of her. I'd have to start a fog machine, turn on certain lights, and I have to get a microphone right, set the P up, PA up every every morning, ladies and gentlemen. Maylee Thomas, and my, she get out of bed. My how now, the tables have turned. Now, yeah, right. now <laughs> I make her. I mean, and I've given her a whole list. So every morning it's. Your exuberance, your excellency, the, the master of yeah, all that's McKinney. I um, so you know, but only rightfully so. So I get a nice entrance. I get out of bed in the morning, and the fog machine's going, uh, and there's confetti and. Well, yeah, I share the, so. the, the, share the spotlight. Is, um, you know, for so much of our married life, people would literally come up to him and say, "Oh, you must be George Thomas." Right. right? <laughs> I know that one, and that's it. Yeah, that's. And so and he's, he keeps saying, "No, actually, she's Maylee Fuller." But um, now I'm actually, you know, he's always, "You must be Maylee's husband," and now I'm George Fuller's wife. Yeah. So it's a good, it's, it's a, a good nice turn little, of the table. It's a flippity flop. It? it is good. It's, it's a, good. a flippity yeah. flop. I love, so. I love the flippity yeah, flop. Yeah. It, yeah. So all yeah. right, so this is a great place for us to um, play your song. Yep. Texas. Home. Texas home. Yeah. Okay, let's okay. take a listen to that. Just shows you how these two rock and how they roll, right? <laughs> rock and roll, baby. That's right. It's all rock and roll. So, tell me about your your songwriting and your creative juices and how you take how you receive your inspiration and then how you go through that process of manifesting it into works of art. You know, I don't think there's really a um, formula for us because it comes in so many different ways just like there's no formula for us in our marriage and the other things that we are created when um you know we just like to try new things and we're willing to you know oh, do that we try new things <laughs> so um but i would say that um it, it probably may, it it's 50 50 yeah. on him coming up with a riff or a, or a, a or line a in a song and we yeah. just build on it from there yeah well i may i may come up with something that i really like guitar wise or my uh or a, a lyric idea um where i may write, a, write an entire song and bring it to me leave for you know to bounce back a bounce off of and she does the same so so once in a while we write you know independently but most of the time it's um we'll be sitting around in bed or whatever and she'll say man i was thinking about this for a song and she'll start singing something and i'll grab a guitar and and uh some period of time later we have a song so that's interesting when you said that sometimes you will write a whole song and bring it to her when you do that because you've been working together for so long do you do you have a sense of her voice within you when you're writing that? You know, or does she take it and make it hers or well, both? I mean, when I write a song, I'm, I literally am writing a song from, from in here. So I actually will write a song, um, whether it's about a relationship I have with my father or, uh, or a fictitious relationship with a girl. Um, 
and so I really yeah. write it. It better and, be fictitious. Yeah. Well, I said that just on camera. <laughs> just um, to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, there's others. Like um, so, so I really actually I don't I don't write it with her voice in mind. Quite frankly, I'll write a song you know that that's uh, in my it's that's just in my heart, and um, and then of course since. I don't sing, or maybe I do, and she tries to hold me down so she can stay the, you know. <laughs> um, and I'd lose my career if lose I started singing. Lose her career if I started singing, mostly because people would run horrified. <laughs> but um, so I can't sing, so we'll, I'll take it and we'll, we'll modify it then. So I don't try to write, if I'm writing a song, I don't write it for her to sing. I write it from how, what I'm feeling. And then well, obviously there'll have to be some uh, him and her and she and he sure. changes. Um, and, and with Ms. May Lee, uh, since she's the one singing, she doesn't have that problem, so she'll write. And, but when we write together, uh, and which is most of the time, um, you know, we're not writing, a, it's, it's not a, uh, a storyline about a guy to a girl, a girl to a guy. Yeah. It's, it's more of a general kind of thing, um, or feelings or, or whatnot. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it could be either gender, but right, would you say? Yeah, for sure. So do you feel like, so May Lee, uh, you're such a an embodiment of this beautiful spirit that just I love the word inspire because it I don't I have to look it up again I don't know if it's in the Greek or the probably Latin but it means to breathe in spirit to take in spirit and you're so inspiring but you're so inspired as well and I can see when you're singing when you're performing that you are literally breathing in spirit and then putting it out there how do you how do you feel about the connection between your spirituality and your creativity that fire and, and the way those things well, I weave? think for me it's pretty much one mm -hmm. um, you know I uh, I know I guess the best part of my life is that I know what I was created to do yeah and I you know I pretty much felt that early on and um, what a gift for me that I've been able to do this for as long as I have. And uh, it, it is who I am. It's what I am, and it was what I created to do and be. And um, when I get to sing for people, I feel such a connection with them. I mean, I tell George all the time that I am fed by the people in the audience and by their spirits and how they are receiving what I'm saying. It's almost like this cycle and it's just, you can feel it. And there's many times, yeah. you know, we, we look at each other and we know when that connection is really happening yeah. because you can feel it. And yeah, it's um, palpable in the room. It, it really yeah. is. And, I, and I have people yeah, come tangible. to me afterwards and, um, and you know, they just say I, it was an experience that I just had and I don't know what it was. And I, you know, I, I try not to get too weird on him, but I'll, I'll say it's it's kind of a spiritual thing. Oh, yeah. You know, and some people are open to that. And some people are like, whoa, you know, but yeah. um, but it really is. And I want, um, you know, I want people to experience something when they come to a show. And uh, and I think for the most part they do. And, and you know, I, I just love what we do. And I love the fact that I'm sharing it with the love of my life. Absolutely. And, you know, that in itself has been a gift that we've been able to do this together for all this time and we'll continue to do mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's just a great feeling to be able to have that connection with, with someone and, and have them experience it with you. And George and I, uh, you know, we weren't always playing music together. We, you know, we met because I had, uh, was playing, had a band and we needed a guitar player and we found out about George and went out to see him. And then this relationship, started with he and I. We were friends for a long time and I tell the story yeah, all the time. The feeling thing that happened on stage. Absolutely. We, we would meet with each other and talk about the band and talk about things and talk about our lives and we just started this connection and then we realized that, you know, it was going to be something a lot more than just music. Sure. Well, you know, it's interesting that you're saying that because for me and a lot of what what I talk about with other people on the Naked Vibe show is that for me, our sexuality and our spirituality and our creativity are not separate things. They're so deeply and intricately intertwined. And as musicians, you know, again, 
uh, when you're on stage together, it's, it is, when everything is working well, it is a lovemaking experience. This is what musicians know. We know it. There's a surreal and a very, some wouldn't call it spiritual, some would just call it an energetic experience, but we all know it though, right? We know that there's this lovemaking experience happening there, and when you end up in a relationship like the two of you did, you literally can't pull apart that creativity and that sexuality, can you? No, it's, um, you know, I'm actually grateful because George and I, you know, we and, and people know it because we talk about it openly. We've certainly had some rocky situations in our life. Um, but and even, Some of those have manifested on stage <laughs> during yes, the gig. True. <laughs> but, um, you know, I really, I really Turning feel your amp off. brings a song to mind <laughs> that I just actually heard recently, which I won't repeat, but go ahead. Well, I am so grateful that we, um, we have this foundation of music together because even through those rocky situations, we still played music together. And there was no denying that, um, that we were connected. And I feel like it kind of saved us in, in a lot of ways because it forced us to still be together and stay together and, uh, you know, as far as communication. And, um, and that and those do you, pesky do you feel things that at kids. all? We've never really talked about that. But um, even in those times that we were going through some painstaking things, we still played music together. and That we did. It really takes it to a whole new level when you take that music that you're creating and then you really just power it with your passion as a husband and wife on stage and it blesses, really, if you will, everyone who's watching. They may not know what it is, but I know that you've experienced that, that you've seen it and felt that it's healing for people. Oh, yeah. Oh, totally, completely. Um, like I said, I, I you know, I, I don't want to pat myself on the back in any way, but I can't tell you how many times we've gotten letters, we've gotten phone calls, and now we've gotten, you know, with and, social and right media, we get emails, show, right and, and the people at the show mm -hmm. that come up and tell us that, that the experience of what they felt in our music has touched them in a way that they really needed and changed them in a way mm -hmm. that they needed at that moment. And... and and to me, it's, you know, it's how the music lives on and how uh, I want it to be. It's an experience that, you know, that I'm so grateful that we have. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think we both know that it's the guitar playing that <laughs> totally. does that. I mean, I mean, it's, it totally I mean it's the solos. It's the melodic of playing. It it's Yeah. It's, it's, and I haven't told you this. So just so you know, your solo is, is, has to have been what did this. But I just got a text from a good friend of mine that goes all the way back to high school the other day. And this is his first time to get married. And he said, I'm getting married. I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. And he said, you know where we met? At your one of your events here. Oh, wow. wow. And I was so like, cool. oh yeah, I had to remember to tell you that. Well, we've had, we have a couple that we know that's been married for 18 years maybe, and they fell in love to Purple Rain. And now our rendition of Purple Rain could be 18 to 24 minutes. So right, I said, I've well, heard it. It's that's awesome. pretty cool, you guys. <laughs> Gave them plenty they, of time they, to they solidify just liked that. each other when the song started, and by the end, they were in love. That was your spell. You know, that just reminded me of, uh, you've heard Joss Stone sing, I put a spell on yeah, you. Yeah, I love that song. You, you ought to do that I if you haven't been doing song. that. Actually, I, um, I just visit, revisited a song that I used to do a long, long time ago, and I'm going to bring it back. But, um, Nina Simone did a fantastic version of it, but you remember that? Put a little sugar in my bowl. Put a little to sweetness yeah. down in my soul. I love I'll have to go back and revisit that. That's cool. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I played that long ago. Yeah. So That's what he does. He puts a little sugar in my bowl. Absolutely. And, he puts a you know, lot of sugar that kind of. Bowl. So, oh, so here's the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I believe in marriage and people can make it work. I'm a product of two parents who, by the time my mother passed, they had been married for 51 years, wow. and they weren't just married. They adored one another, and they were <clears throat> spicy and energetic and had a, a beautiful love affair for those 51 years, and everybody around them could see it. And again, it, it goes back to what I said that you guys do. It, it blessed people around them, and we still hear about that. It, it makes a difference. There's a ripple effect that goes out from around that couple. And I hear, you know, again, as, you know, in my coaching arena, if you will, uh, I hear from way too many people 
who are married and have been married for a long time and are not having sex, who haven't had sex in years. And I believe that like music and like creativity, that these things are inseparable and that that is a foundation and a glue for a marriage. So talk to me about that for a minute because I want, I want people to really, really want us to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that It for is a the naked vibes. It is, and so it's time to well, get you know what, naked. But, but you know, in a, on a serious note, we, um, we are intimate, sexually uh, more than we uh, were when we you know when we first got married probably that's fabulous I mean, we are we, we're are easily keeping pace oh, for sure yeah we easily keep sure. pace for sure and um, and you know we've like like other people that have been together for as long as we have I mean we have four children we've certainly gone through that process of the, you know when they were little and I felt just tired and worn out and yeah there was all those times it was her fault that we didn't (laughs) so we agree on that so yeah there was a spell that for a period of time there was you know but you know i mean i i i I can totally relate to these women that say that they're tired and they feel like they've just been pulled and and they just don't have it but even the times when that when i didn't feel like it and we would push through that. I was always glad that we did because I was energized by the love that I got from George. Yes. And um, and sometimes you just have to do it. It's almost like going and working out at the gym. You don't want to go. You know you need to. You don't want to go. But once you go, you feel so good and you're so yes. glad you did. And sometimes sex is that way. And it I mean, is. You it's just got to get black yeah. and white with it. That's really how it is. Fortunately, it's not like that anymore. Our kids are grown. We have, you know, our youngest one is a 17, and the other three are off doing some fantastic things in their life. And poor Layla, the one that's still left at home, hears the door go lock because we've got a big <laughs> lock. You know, as soon as we shut the two doors, you know, she's like the lock up. Oh, oh, the music there on. Again. She's like, oh, oh I'm still on the comment, you know, a couple minutes back. I mean, I, I don't ever remember me having to push through. <laughs> I mean, it's never, no, you didn't. I, I've never, I've never sat there and said, "Oh, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push through this." Like, I mean, I've never likened it to going to the gym when I don't feel like going to the gym. There's it's not been, a woman out there that can't relate to what I was just saying when they have little kids in their in, yeah. in, the, in their for, house. For the guys, oh. it's, it's, see, we don't compare it like that. We're like, it's like going to get an ice cream sundae. Why right. would you not want to? Right? Why I mean, would you not want that an ice cream sundae every yeah, day? Yeah, the woman's like, it's like having to go to the gym. I mean. Really? It's not like going to the gym. It's like getting. It's like going to Baskin Robbins. You know. Granted, after it you have the same flavor sure. over, <laughs> and over and over and over and over, then you know that's a whole different story. But I love it. It's another discussion. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, that that's perfect though, because then you get to see the perspectives of the man and woman's viewpoint. And I have heard it from from the other side of the fence too. That's that's there as well. But I just think that. I think that, like you're saying, that you do, to take it away from the push-through idea and bring it around to saying, to not ever forget that this is something that is a gift for us and that for couples, especially who've been together for a long time, to remember and review, wait a second, this is a gift. And on the other side of this fence, it makes me feel great. Yeah. And no plus, really? I, plus, I think in the vows, it was a contractual obligation. <laughs> I think, if I remember correctly, there's, you know, if you, if you don't feel it, hey, I, think you're, I think you're bound. You're bound. <laughs> yeah. You're bound. Well, I tell you what, George and I have, um, we've had a very open discussion always about what we like and what we don't like. Actually, I don't think we've ever said what we don't like because I don't think there's anything we don't like. We are we're we're that couple that will just you know the marriage bed is undefiled and we try and do a lot of different things and sometimes it works and sometimes we just start laughing. You just laugh. I mean, yeah, we've had sessions where we just crack up at ourselves. We try. We, <laughs> You're like okay, that didn't. We tried, tried once the, the inverted cheese doodle. Let me tell you. <laughs> Not, if you're over if you're over forty, you don't do that. You know, I right. mean, you can't, we're not made to to right. like that. So yeah, you, right. you learn what you do and you don't do. Exactly. I mean, for some people, you know, I hear you know the food thing. Well, I've tried the chocolate business, and guess what? Tried that doesn't work for uh, me. We well, love the chocolate. No, we don't love chocolate. Well, I'll tell you. Like, I am the mayor. Um, <laughs> 
But I, speaking of food, now I have tried bringing food to bed because I'm a multitasker. <laughs> and reminds me of George Costanza and Seinfeld. But I've, I, hey, I'll bring a, a roast beef and a party cheese sandwich. And you know, I mean, because I can do both. I can do both. I believe you. I, I you can. absolutely. So, you know, and that you. apparently was not proper. You know, it was like not sexy. I don't know. But, you know, I'm yeah, like, I'm, I'm nourishing my body. I'm going to concur with that. Not, not sexy. sexy. So, yeah, just guys. Have you seen the sandwich sexy. I make? It's, <laughs> let me tell you, guys would dig it. They <laughs> guys would, would they totally would, they, dig they it. They could relate to having that sandwich while they're in bed. With their oh, wife. my yeah. gosh. You guys are just so much fun. And I love your, your openness and your ability to just share about things from community and government and all the way to sex and your creativity and I really appreciate that because that's that's really what I endeavor to sort of bring to the table for people who are watching this or listening to this that life is about wholeness really living life is about bringing your whole self to the table you know and and not segregating out various different parts of yourself and I think that there's so many areas that we all need healing and I believe that a lot of that can come not only through music but through great conversations oh absolutely yeah. and um, I'm I, I'm just so grateful that you have this platform where you can bring people together and let them talk about this stuff so that everybody knows I'm not the weirdo I'm not the only one you right? know and um, we're, we're, we're all very sexual beings we all are very spiritual beings we all are uh, musically inclined we know what mm -hmm. music does it brings the it brings the world together on yeah. so many levels and <clears throat> so I think really people just need to step out of that comfort zone and not I mean you know not be afraid uh, I think a lot of people are fearful of what people might think yeah. and you know fortunately for me I've gotten to a place where I am don't really I mean I, I do care what people think but at the same time I also know that it, that people want you to be real and free sometimes George says I'm a little too real and you know <laughs> and, yes. I, and I do know that I do know I that I give mean, examples of that but I won't <laughs> but but I think as a whole everybody can connect with someone when they see that they're being authentic yes and, and that's one thing about George and I for I and you know you don't walk away from us and feel like that you know we're not authentic. That's right. We, we pretty much put it out there. I agree with and that. I think that our country is in a place right now, and I'm I'm convinced that that's the reason why George is the mayor, is because he had the ability, he has the skill set, he's got the heart for it. He's actually got a pastor's heart. He's he loves people, and um, and he's authentic. Absolutely. And that and when I read the four hundred fifty dollar month salary, I had thought that I thought that that decimal point was a comma. <laughs> and it was just missing a zero. And I was thinking, geez. I mean, like, yeah, no. it was a rude awakening when I got the first check. <laughs> so like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Must be a mistake. Wait, here. wait a tick. <laughs> I've done the math. This must be for the first five minutes of the first council <laughs> meeting. But, oh, yeah. gosh. But you guys, you are so authentic. And so I, I appreciate you doing this with me. And I, I really would love to hear you do another song. And I think you have one that, that really fits with everything we've been talking about. Absolutely. Uh, what, about what crazy? is that called? Crazy is what I need. Crazy, yeah. It's pretty much, um, pretty much how we live our life. Right? Crazy. Crazy. Let's Crazy. listen to that. Let's do that right now. Love you, baby. So when you've been together as long as we have, um, 26 years. You go crazy. Together. Go, that's what it's about, right? You just go crazy. No. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, you know, you have to keep things lively. And you can't get yourselves in a rut in a marriage or else it's going to go downhill. So I, I do my part, don't I? I try to, I try to keep it exciting, <laughs> sometimes maybe keep a little too crazy. exciting. And crazy, that's why I thought this was about. No. Yeah, so, um, so I came up with this idea that I wanted to write a song about George and I's relationship. And I called on a friend of mine um, that writes with me often, and his name is John Christopher Davis. And we wrote this song together about George and I. And it's called Crazy Is What I Need, and it's pretty much self-explanatory when you hear the lyrics. But um, we both kind of need a little crazy, and as you get to know us, we're very grounded, but we also have a lot of spark in our life, and we do that on purpose. So it's a song called sometimes Crazy. Sometimes the spark but... turns into a bonfire. But... Sometimes, yeah, sometimes our hair gets on fire. <laughs> 
Was amazing. What's it called again? Crazy is what I need. Crazy is what I need. I loved it. I know everybody watching this, anybody who tunes into this particular show, has got to be a fan of that. It's such a great song. Well, and it's got a really cool video that we did in the studio, and they can certainly find that on YouTube. But um, I love that song um, because George and I, you know, having been together for so long, every time I sing that song, I can literally picture myself when I had the long hair and wore the little mini skirts and and I, and I picture that every time we go to bed at night so <laughs> yeah, so it works for both of us. Oh, wait, we, crazy is what I need. I, that's right. Yeah, so I have to go, you know, back Give to, a reminder. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing it and thank you for for being here and and just letting me into your space. 
just tap into these little pieces and parts here of what Maley and George have had to share because they have so much to share and so much that you can learn from their leadership, from their love and their passion and the way that music and love heals our world. This is the Naked Vibe Show. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Bye.